what do you advise to anyone hoping to get a job after school like oh i want to get a full-time job i want to go into nhs this is what i want to do what is your advice for them and like how do they prepare themselves like this is this is reality this is what i should do but i don't try it <laughs> <laughs> enjoyment if you mind <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice and today if you have been an OG on this channel, you will definitely know this guest and if you've not watched this, if you've not watched my previous video, I'm just going to link our previous videos up in the, up somewhere in this video. So now join me and welcome the Eba Delectable, I don't know the meaning of that, but Delectable Camera. Hi guys, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much, Alice, for inviting me. Thank you. It's not like you had a choice, but that's the thing because she she <laughs> she like she didn't ask me. Oh, are you free? Is, is it a good time? She just said, "Kali, Thursday by slow time, you must be here." Violence. So anyway, thank you for you know showing up on this. On thank time. you. It's a privilege. So we have a couple of questions. We're going to be answering burning questions. Just stay till the end. Still. Stay, stay. You will see. I know I'm gonna <laughs> stay. But anyway, so the very first thing, what have you been doing for the past one year and few months, like since September last year? Um, so I'll say September 2021. Yes, yeah, so that's like a year and about five months now. I've been studying for my masters. I just completed it last year, September. So it was, like, um, it was for a year. So yes, yeah, I've done my masters. And she came out with a distinction as a proud friend. Guys. Relax, <laughs> relax. <laughs> she said no. Uh, yeah. So, so that's all. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the for all the support I gave her. Thank God. Yeah. 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 So the very second one is, how would you describe the MSc Biomedical Science program, like in so forth, and maybe from what you've heard from peers in the UK generally? Um, MSc Biomedical Science in Salford, because I mean that's my experience, was compared to where we're coming from, where we studied medical laboratory science in Nigeria, it was it was less clinical than it was in Nigeria. So for people who, especially Nigerians, it would be well in Salford, it is not as clinical as it is in Nigeria. For other people who are coming from other countries, I don't know how it was in your country, but. In particularly in Salford, it um, was a mixture of both clinical, um, both analytical, because you get to learn different skills, different laboratory skills, um, such as um, Western blood, gel electrophoresis, things that you were probably were not like the routine thing in the lab, or things we were taught in school that we didn't have the ability or the opportunity to you know, carry out. Those, those are things that you get to carry out lab wise. It helps your writing skills as well. You know, they help you or they make you write, make you, so it will help you. If you're someone who is into medical writing, that would help. Maybe laboratory writing or laboratory reports, and lab reports, and then maybe, and then it could also help your data analysis as well for people who use like SPSS, who use um, GraphPad Prism, you know, and then it will also help your business mindset because there are courses you will do that would help you improve on your business skills. And to be honest, it was really, really diversified because people who wanted to go into biotechnology could also do biotechnology. And people who wanted to go into, um, pharma, pharma, into the pharmaceutical industry could also go into the pharmaceutical industry. So it was really broad. So you had the opportunity of choosing whatever you wanted. Oh, okay, thank you so much. So now uh, we know you went for master's and now everybody's itching to you. I was the job search. I was the job search after school. Hmm. I would say my job search started from my first month in the uk from my first month in like my first month starting my master's so immediately i got into the country i started looking for jobs so i was because i had clinical experience from nigeria i started looking for um since i was not yet hcpc registered for hcpc hcpc means health and cares health and care professions council i hope i'm right I'm, i believe i'm right <laughs> So yeah, HBC means Health and Care Professionals Council. So it's it's the registration is the registration you need to practice as a biomedical scientist. So I had not had that yet, and I had not yet applied. So because I had not yet done that, I knew I needed to like um, apply for um, you know apply in places where I knew I could still get lab experience while while still being like basically getting lab experience even though I was not registered. So uh, you could work as a laboratory assistant. You could work as a as an associate practitioner in some um, NHS hospitals, 
Why? But I think now these days they've been recruiting they, for, for for that NHS by associate practitioner. Now they've been recruiting people who are even HCPC registered. Now it's no more yeah. anybody. But I mean, some trust will still do that. But don't worry, we'll talk about that um, in a separate video. In a separate video, yes. yeah. We'll get to the NHS part. I started um, applying on Indeed. I started applying on LinkedIn. So what I did was I created my profile on LinkedIn. I had put up my history. So because I was looking for medical laboratory assistant jobs, I put up medical laboratory assistant roles that I had done in the past. And this included the times I had worked like during my stu my, my student postings, all those times I had spent like three months, four months at, at a stretch during clinical posting. So I put all of that on my LinkedIn profile. If you go there now, they won't be there, trust me. <laughs> I removed them anyways, but yeah, because I needed that role, I had to just put them in. So year after year, year after I added them there, I added them there, this is my LinkedIn. And then I also, you know, put up um, my history as well, working as medical laboratory sciences in the places that I had worked at before I, you know, came to the UK. And then I was also looking for jobs, um, not just with the NHS, but with private places. So, like I said, I used LinkedIn, I used Indeed, I used CV Library. I used tip jobs, I used total jobs. I went as far as going to check out um, local agencies like your world healthcare. I think those were the first people I I ever um I mean got to speak with. I don't want to add the other part, but I got to like interact with or that way. The first agency I basically got to know and then I worked with I I worked with Maxima at some point. Um Nexus, uh, NHS professionals. So all of this, I mean, and these are many more agencies that like you could, local agencies that you could work with, you know, they hook you up and they would stick to your 20 hours. If, by this time you're watching this video, if um, the UK still has 20 hours limit on students, so they will give you shifts that can work or favor your time. And I had the opportunity to work at a private lab um, where where um, I was able, they, they would be able to work with my 20 hours, but during holidays I could work full time and all of that. So and that it was a it was a COVID lab. So I think I worked as a laboratory technician rather than as a laboratory assistant. So I um, because they had seen my recent, you know, that was why I actually got the techni technician role rather than the assistant role. So I just think it depends on what is available at the um, company that you are applying to. Basically. At what point, like I remember, you, I, after your HCPC registration, at what point did you actively start looking for a full time job? So a full time role happened when I got my HCPC registration because if you if you had got if I had um, applied with my HCPC registration, right, I could have gotten a full time job that would have you know sponsored me. And you, if you, I mean if you are being sponsored, it means that you can work full time. So I said applying when I had immediately I got my HCPC registration. And that was like in my last semester of my master's so I had freer time so I was just doing my project or so my dissertation so I had the opportunity to like you know apply and I, I could work full-time so I didn't I didn't mind so yeah that's when I said my full-time job application with DNHS and some other private places um, so when you started applying for jobs what type of jobs did you apply for did you just apply to biomedical science roles did you apply to like was it just specific biomedical science roles you were applying to or you applied to like many more things like what were the things you applied to i smile do you know why i smile <laughs> <laughs> because i applied to so many that were not even biomedical scientist roles you know at some point i started to like it was really it was a lot because you will not want to restrict yourself to choose biomedical sciences rules. There's some companies that do not have the title biomedical sciences, but by the time you read the job, you know, duties and you know the role, you know that okay, this is something you can do and this is what you can fit into. You know, so it was I applied to the NHS, I applied to private places, so I had to work on my supporting information, this for NHS um, jobs, which we'll talk about in another video. Um I also worked on my CV and my cover letter. So for every place I worked at, I had to describe you know the main duties of my job roles at these different points I worked at. You know, I put them on my CV, brief and straight to the point, and I made them fit into what the job role. On like SI, where you have to support information, that's what I mean by SI for the NHS, where you have to give stories. Your cover letter has to be very brief, but still pass the message. You're trying to convince them that you are actually the best fit. So it's not like you're not copying your CV into your explaining how your skills match what they are requesting for. So cover letter is a bit more 
convince. You know what cover letter is now, so. Alright, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, another question. What's your advice to anyone hoping to get a job after school? Like, oh, I want to get a full-time job. I want to go into NHS. This is what I want to do. What is your advice for them? And like, how do they prepare themselves? Like, this is this is reality. This is what I should do. Hmm. I would say, first of all, you have to prepare your mind because it's actually... I will say survival, survival of the fittest because it is a long, hard journey and some people are actually really lucky to get it really, really quick some people are not that lucky to get it really quick and I believe everybody has their time so you might have to build, so just the same way I want to believe I'm talking to a lot of um, immigrants not just people who have been in the UK so for immigrants, you know how it was, you know, not so easy coming into or moving to a new country. Some of you might have, might have had it easy, some of you might have, might, have, might, have, might have had it tough, but there's always a huge difference when you move or, or relocate. So that relocation, you know when you have to wait for your visa and everything, you know it, sometimes it takes time, sometimes it doesn't, but I mean, there was, it was a long process, so you knew the efforts you put into. So that's the same thing with the job search. You have to be, you have to be strong because you could be sending one application now and you're getting like three other rejections and that three other rejection should not stop you from making that application sometimes you might need to you know speak to somebody to look at your cv to look at your cover letter to look at your supporting information am i getting it right am i doing it right you know sometimes some people just apply once i know a friend that just applied once and he got it you know i have friends who, who started application after me and got jobs before me so it's just you shouldn't compare yourself with anybody because you will get really frustrated so i would say Start your job search, right? Stick to what you're doing. Stick to be confident in what you're 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 doing, and be and make sure that you know what you're saying in your CV, right? If even if you are, you have an idea or you don't really know, try make sure that you are prepared before an interview. Also, be consistent. You have to be consistent because, um, say for example, you used for your, for a week you applied for about twenty jobs, right? So if the next week you decide to take a break, and the next week you receive 20 rejections so it means that you are you are back to start to school it means that you don't apply for anything at all and mean that you're, that means you're, you're not looking forward to anything so let it be continuous even if you can't do it every day make sure that no week goes by without you applying for jobs so be consistent be strong-hearted as in you have to build up you know don't be don't be don't be too discouraged right don't be I'm, i mean i'm speaking because i have been there i've been very discouraged as well so don't be too discouraged even if you see that you're sad about it, move on quickly and keep applying. Don't stop applying. Don't just do it to one place. Do it to many places. To private, to um, NHS, the government, anywhere. It could be there's the UK um, Health Security Agency. There's the NHS. There's there are private. There are different private companies. Sometimes you might even go and Google private companies that a biomedical scientist could work in. You never know. Some even some some companies that you would never think that they have a medical side could actually have a medical side, and you'll be able to see that. And then some th some things you can do also is you can go on LinkedIn and look at people's. You can just Google biomedical sciences and view. You know how you can see somebody's um, profile from another person's profile. You can just go through that and see what they've been doing before in the past. Look at their history. Just understand what you and before you know, start seeing different companies that you could actually apply to. You can also speak to people on LinkedIn if you need help. You know, yeah. What are the key things you advise someone to work on for the application? So, I would say the first thing to do is to start your HTTP registration. Start it. Start it. Because if you do not have the money, I would say put your documents together. Get all your documents together so that you're not... So when you have the money, you won't be, you won't be trying to look for one document or the other. If it, if it requires you renewing your license, please do that. Get, get all your documents ready. Let's be that you have the money today. You can apply for it today. So get your documents ready for HPC, get the money, register, and me follow the process through, no matter how long it takes, just follow the process through. While you're doing that, be getting your support information ready. This is for people who want to apply to the NHS. I'll say also get your CV ready, get your, have a rough cover letter, have something that you just need to edit some parts in. Also, I'll say document your laboratory skills down. Things you've learned in during your masters, things you've learned maybe before in your previous workplace, have them on maybe in a notepad or begin to put them together in your cover letter on and on your CV as well. Put them together so that you won't be so. But and as you're doing that, when you start applying for jobs, when you start to see jobs, you see some skills or some laboratory techniques that you've done before that you probably didn't remember when you're writing your CV or your cover letter. You can now add it to your 
you know, to your CV and your co editor. So I'll say document your process, things you've learned, things you've done that I think are so for example many um many job many, many job adverts always ask for people who know how to carry out data analysis. So if you're somebody who has maybe used any of these if you're going very good, very good with Excel, please put it that they want someone who is proficient in um, the Microsoft Office. So have that. It might not be clinical, but it is very relevant in a job. You know, talk about LIMS, laboratory information management system. Those are key things. Don't remove the. Um, always remember quality control, EQA, I, um, I, internal quality control, external quality control, SOPs, your standard operating procedures. All those things, don't forget that those things are very important. And if you check most job descriptions, those things are one of the things that like, are very routine. So yeah, also have that on your CV, on your cover letter, just put them together. Yeah. Also, um, activate your LinkedIn profile, you know, make it make it good, put, a, put, put up a good picture, make sure that your, your experiences are you know, are clearly stated, like what you, and like what you did here, don't just put you worked here, that's all, put some, just put a, a note of what you did in this place, that was different what you did in this other place, you don't have to necessarily repeat, I mean, if it's the same job as you did, think about something new or something else that was different from what you had done in this previous place, you know, maybe in this place you were not, maybe you were just assisting um, the laboratory sciences, but the next place you could talk about all that you, um, had the opportunity to review SOPs, you know, let, let, it, let it show that you are, you are someone who was growing, not just repeating or just doing routine things, just following procedures, you also, you know, adding to it. Have all those trainings in your CV, you know, have all those seminars you've come for, those things you've learned, just find a way to put it into your, you know, your CV or your cover letter, um, you know, put out your CV on Indeed as well, the other sites I mentioned, reach out to them, reach out to those people, um, to the local agencies, give them your CV. This is what you, this is what you're doing, and you're looking for any job role available. You know, those are things you can do as well. Yeah, that's all I can remember for now.